see him do it, but when doubters were like, dude, you definitely can't do that. Nobody's ever done it before, but they ignored him. So we're here to thank him, rank him, and finally applaud him. And to finally end sports all-time debates, and to finally rate sports all-time greats, we've devised a solution to bring conclusion to the one question that you and your friends just love musing, the one question that the barbershops are always losing, the one question no one wants to answer after they just finished losing, the one question for which the experts usually like to run. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Who's Number One. Welcome to another edition of Who's Number One. I'm Trey Wingo. ESPN Classic is picking a hoops team. Actually, we're picking the equivalent of four. Our 20 players include a couple of big men from a certain Southern California-based dynasty and a center who led his Northern California-based team to back-to-back -to -back national championships. And from Ohio, one who was a magician with his mind and one who was a magician with the ball. Here then are the 20 greatest college basketball players of all time. Everybody's All-America choice. Bill Bradley, to me, was the consummate basketball player in terms of getting the most out of the physical part of his game. He could shoot it, he could pass it, and before he got the ball, the play was made. Bill does everything in basketball smoothly, easily, and superbly well. Bill Bradley was a technician in terms of what he wanted to do. One of the great shot makers of his time and one of the great shot makers of all time in NCAA history. Now watch Bradley number 42. Beautiful hook shot. They called him Dollar Bill. With the game on the line and the winning shot to be made, Bill Bradley was money. He was an Ivy Leaguer who understood the sport's subtleties. A two-time All-American at Princeton, he averaged 30 points, and in the 1965 NCAA Final Four consolation game, lit up Wichita State for 58. I have asked people since that day, can I get a film of this game? Because I was unconscious that night. Everything I threw up went in. He had a presence as a college player that even players who were probably more talented than him later didn't have. Tim Duncan is a unique player because of his mindset when he steps on the court. He's never rattled. Um, you can never really throw him off. He doesn't dazzle anybody with the things that he does. But he can score low, he can score facing, he's a great passer, very unselfish. The most fundamentally sound college basketball player since Bill Walton. Just did everything right. There was a sense of serenity in Tim Duncan's game, seamless and unhurried, all the dots connected. At Wake Forest, he was a two-time All-American and the first player in NCAA history with more than 1,500 points, 1,000 rebounds, 400 blocks, and 200 assists. He had, in short, four ways to beat you. Anybody that doesn't understand the brilliance of Tim Duncan's play uh, isn't really a, a, a basketball person. He's just a fan looking for titillation, but to perform in a proper way, in a fundamental way, that makes everybody else around you better, that's pretty special. The thing about Tom Gold is that he did every phase of the game of basketball. Tom was ahead of his time. He could play the center position, he could play the forward position, he could play the guard position. He could handle it, he could shoot it, he could make a play, he could guard, he was a great defender. Tom Gola had great court vision. He truly understood what it took to, to run a show. Uh, have the ball at a crucial time so that either he would have the choice of taking the shot himself or, or making sure that the right person got it. A three-time All-American, the 6'6 Tom Gola was a tireless retriever and a solid scorer. Only one of two players with more than 2,000 points and 2,000 rebounds. He led LaSalle to two straight NCAA finals, including the 1954 National Championship. 
His career total of 2,201 rebounds remains the NCAA record. Tom Gola may have been the greatest individual player pound for pound in the era in which he played in the history of college basketball. If you even say today, who are the greatest players ever to come out of Philadelphia? Obviously first is Will Chamberlain and Tom Gola will be right there. I thought George was one of the best or greatest competitors that I ever coached. George worked as hard as any man that ever played for me. He made himself into a great basketball player. When he was playing, they called the big guys goons. And they were just big guys that were taller than anybody else, stronger than anybody else, that stood under the basket and put the ball in the basket. That's all they did. George Mikan, I don't think, ever took a shot where he was more than three steps away from the basket. He kept opposing teams busy defending their basket, most often without success. Gangling, bespectacled, and immovable, the 6'10 George Mikan was college basketball's first dominant big man. A three-time All-American, he led DePaul to the NIT title in 1945, and the next season, as Player of the Year, was the nation's top scorer with 23 points a game. The thing about him that I remember the most is not just his size, but he was like an oak tree. You couldn't push him out. He just stood there. And even today's players, as much as they push, they couldn't push George Mike another. He was too big and too strong. Michael Jordan came to us not highly recruited compared to what people are today, but uh, one that improved every year. He grew and he also would listen every practice and work so hard. Michael Jordan. This guy hated to lose anything. I mean, he had to be the first guy dressed. He had to be the first guy in the shower. He had to be the first guy out of the locker room. He had to be the first guy that's sitting down at a training table to eat. The fact that Michael Jordan is not in the top one of college basketball players is because of the system in which he played. The line went that the only person who could stop Michael Jordan was Dean Smith. But in three seasons at North Carolina under Smith, MJ flourished. He was player of the year as a junior, and as a freshman nailed the game-winning jump shot from the wing that delivered a national championship. 20 seconds to go. They Jimmy got something to set up. And here's Jordan. Yep, he's letting it go. Good from 15 feet. I think if you followed North Carolina the second and third year of Jordan, and you saw his progression, and you saw some of the games he played, it was not a surprise that he became this player of the age. Next, the man who became the NBA logo, and a point guard with flair and a really cool nickname. 